All right. So the Browns play last week at this point, right? Um, and I think there's a lot of interesting things to get from some of this tape. Look, the first thing I want to do is just show some real appreciation to Dearness Johnson. Uh, but I also want to highlight a couple of other plays from other players that I felt like were pretty important and some things, some missed opportunities that can show where this team can improve, where they need to get better, and where personnel becomes to be an issue. But before I get into that, before I jump into this film breakdown, I want to make sure I give a shout out to the Patreon.com dog check tier members who make things like this possible. And I'm going to start with Michael Matik, Camvax, Jalil Salim Jr. and Sr., Caleb Pickering, Benjamin Woods, Michael Terry, Sam28, Wani Boy, Rob Morehouse, Tyler Chiz, Michael Morales, Mark Kahn, Max Haymaker, Nick Merrick, DAJ, Joe Hart, Gabriel Wilson, Fred Pat the Third, David Valtiar, Relentless Buck, Rex Kaufman, Kevin Johnson, Cleveland Cart, Matt Eight. Sign Sheets, Gemini, Leon Freeman, Fight 3074, Chunt, Yo-Yo, Matt Lloyd, Paul Wilcox, Hondo Magnifico, Cal Stouffer, Lukey from Munich, Dave Roth, J Guy 101, Musty Taco, Brad Cowbo, Dylan W, James McGinley, Arendal, Chad Gimme, David Malinato, Josh Bendor, Austin Rich, Mark M, Stuart Moore, Dylan Hill, Cleveland BCI, Robert Germain, Dave Mike May, Andrew Hirsch, Curtis Bayer, Batman, Barack Kumar, John Albert, Beerman 069, Masayua, Butts Roland, Mac House, Reeve Hertz, Philip Wilcox, and Marie Vivert, Sean Barron, Goggles Pisano, Dom Gazzullo, Nick Nasty, Ian Whitaker. Colin 2 and 6, Christian, Dave Strong, Michael Stone, Soul Train, Billy, Moose Gentry, Austin Z, Mark Burnett II, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, Dog Pound Kai, Greg Ehlers, Austin Bolin, Lydia Mahawk, Alexander Davis, Chris Falms, Picktown Browns backer, Max Nilakenko, Max Al Dojo, and Water Bear Marketing. Guys, thank you so much for the support. We're doing the whole video in the back cave today, so let's get into it. All right, man. So this first play, I want to just show off um, the blocking here. I think the blocking is really excellent on this play. Let me get some of this stuff out the way for y'all. All right. So I think the blocking here is key. You see here. What we want to highlight is 64. I think uh, Treader had himself a very, very, very solid day. But I highlight 64. And watch how he gets his second level, clears up a lane, and then you're going to see what you really want to see in these zone blocking schemes, which is a butt on a butt, which means green space, which means touchdown, right? So you see butt, butt, butt. Dearness gets into that second level, does a great job there, finishes the run, gets to about the 11-yard line. That's great running. Um, by Dearness to be able to slip into that hole. And that's what you're going to see about Dearness. He is a contortionist. Like, he can get tackled but still find a way to get, like, four yards after the tackle just because he can contort himself um, properly. And he's very patient as a runner. But also the blocking did a lot of work on that play, right? All Dearness had to do was see butt, run behind butt, and get about 20 yards. So good on the offensive line there. But it wasn't just all the offensive line that's going to get all the credit today. Uh, a lot of this – was Dearness Johnson, man. Just again, look at J.C. Treader right here. Come out there, get a hand on a hat, and then you see the seal, seal, and there's nothing but open space in front of him. You know, Schwartz, he's in a bad position here. If he's able to finish this ta uh, block, then that probably goes to the house, but it's Anthony Schwartz. He's not really supposed to be doing that, um, and he's not really in a great position to do it either because he's too far upfield. Well, he's not far enough upfield to be able to get good leverage without it being a holding call. So good on Schwartz not to get the penalty, you know what I mean? Uh, but that was a play that was real close to being a touchdown it's just because of how well they blocked this and also um, how badly Denver played this. Don't know what 40's looking at, but he in the wrong hole, brother. He in the wrong hole, and there ain't nobody over here. You know what I mean? So, combination of a lot of things on that play that almost scored a touchdown. But, you know, it's good running, good blocking. Bad defense, going to equal big run. All right, this next play right here is just one of Dearness' skill sets is look how smooth these counter cuts are, right? He gets up here, runs to this line, nice little cut, bam, back inside. Just nice and smooth, man. Got to appreciate this one, Dearness. He's so smooth. 
just again, outside, inside, back in, and it just shakes these guys, man. He's not the most explosive cutter in the world. You can see how he gets there with his feet. Like, he's not just one step boom, but he is just so smooth with his body control. I think that's Dearness's best thing. He has great body control, and that allows him to contort himself in ways that just throw off guys. It's a lot, it's very similar to Le'Veon Bell, right? Where Le'Veon Bell physically was not that great of an athlete um, for a running back. He was, that's why he got drafted late. He was a pretty average running back athlete. But what he did have was really good body control once he got to Pittsburgh and lost some weight. Um, and this is what Dearness has, right? He has great vision, great patience, but also look at that body control here. Just to be able to go inside out. Even when he gets a hand on him, look how he contorts his body to move forward. Not flashy, not sexy. Well, it is a little sexy, um, but still just great football there. And that's kind of what Dearness can do for you. And, again, we're going to see this from the backside angle, and you can just get a, good, get a good idea of how far this cut did for him. Like he's right here. He looks dead to right. Everybody's biting on it. He sees the backside, and then, boom, just cut through. Just cut through. Stumbles a little bit, has great body control, though. Body control is one of them underrated qualities of a football player overall, and especially of a running back that we never talk about. But I think Dearness, you know, he probably has the best body control on the team. Kareem is somebody who's a really explosive back, who's really quick and fast. He doesn't have great body control. I would say Nick Chubb has pretty good body control. Not as good as Dearness is, though. Um, Dearness probably has the best body control of any of these running backs on the team. Maybe Demetri Felton. Um, but, you know, it's definitely down to those two, which is incredible when you're talking about your third and fourth string running back um, here. Again, man, just Dearness Johnson, his smooth cutting. This is another play here you get to see. And just look at the smooth cut. Smooth cut. That's why he was able to get something out of nothing so many times because the cuts are just so smooth. Um, and his body control is so good that even if he gets tackled, he can slither into a couple of extra yards there. We're going to talk about two things here on this play. One, the limitations of Case Keenum. And two, what I meant when I said a lot of the stuff that comes down that people are critical about Odell really just boils down to bad luck. And here's what I mean with the first one. Case Keenum, the limitations. Look, this is going to be a deep ball The Case Keenum just flat out can't make. The play's there. It should have been made. Case Keenum just can't make the throw. Um, so that's the limitation of Case Keenum. Now, let's talk about the other one. Because when I said, oh, Odell has bad luck, there were quite a few people who took umbrage with that. Oh, it's Odell dropping balls. And look, Odell's not above criticism. There's a level of criticism that he deserves. But when I hear things like Odell can't get open anymore, Odell can't get washed, as somebody who watches the tape every week, I know that not to be true because I see multiple occasions where Odell is wide open and just doesn't get the ball here. Um, so it's not really a case of him not being able to get open. It's just bad luck here, right? He gets wide open on this play, but by chance, he just has a quarterback here who can't make this throw. So it gets underthrown to him. Um, this is a play here where he's on a slant and go on a play action. So slant go, sluggo, stop and go. Um, it's pretty much the same concept where you run downfield, stop, act like you're going across the field, and go up, right? He runs this to perfection. He runs this play to perfection. He's wide open. Uh, but, you know, the play just can't be made because, you know, unfortunately, because of circumstance, you don't have your starting quarterback in, and the throw doesn't get made. And even when you've had your starting quarterback in, to be fair, it's not like Baker's been hitting these consistently with him for whatever reason. You know, and Odell was open, the one in Minnesota. Baker just missed him horribly for whatever reason. This is something that happened here again. Watch Odell on this route. This is a crisp route. Look at the cut. He runs this, goes inside out. He ran the slant and go to the outside. My bad, not to the inside. So correct that. Um, but he gets this, got the guy on his heel, sees where the hips are, pops in, pops out, boom, wide open right there. Ball should be out. Ball is out. And look, ball's out. Right at the break. It could be out earlier, right? Right when he sees Odell do the cut in. That's usually when the ball should be out, especially if this is designed on the rollout, which it looks like it is. 
So right when Odell does that step right here, Ball should probably be out right now. Case Keenum knows that. Um, he hesitates a second. Throws it a little bit later. Once Odell actually makes the breaks and he sees him wide open. Again, he probably should have been earlier. He throws the ball up. And look, Odell is open. If that ball is thrown to this front pylon, that's a touchdown. If it's thrown here, it's a touchdown. But that ball goes nowhere near the end zone. It ends up short, and it almost gets picked off by this dude who really shouldn't be able to make this play. The ball should probably have been out by now. And, again, arm strength isn't just about how far you can get the ball downfield. Most quarterbacks in the NFL, regardless of if they have a weak arm, can get the ball down the field a generous amount. It's about how fast that ball travels downfield, right? A ball going from here to here and, you know, let's just say a second or, or a second and a half can get picked off. A ball going from here to here, even if Baker's late, Baker could probably fit it in there in like 0.8 seconds, and that guy's not going to get there. So, again, arm strength ain't always about how far you can throw it, even though that becomes the main topic of conversation. It's really about how fast you can get the ball there. That's what makes um, Baker be able to make up for some of the mistakes he does where he pats a lot. He could just fit a ball in there real quick and still get into that window just because he has the arm strength and the zip on his football to do that. Case Keenum. Even when the ball goes far, it don't go fast. Um, and instead of this being a touchdown, instead of this being thrown, you know, right here to his numbers, him catching it and at least getting to like the five yard line, it almost gets intercepted. And that's kind of the limitations, right? If Case Keenum wants to make that throw, him being Case Keenum, he has to throw that ball before Odell makes his break because he doesn't have the zip to get it in there just a little bit late. So those are the limitations with Case Keenum, right? If you want to go downfield, you can go downfield with Case Keenum. Theoretically, you can do it. But the issue isn't going to be can he get the ball downfield. It is can he anticipate well enough to be able to fit the ball in that given window without it being intercepted and – if this is any indicator, the answer might not be yes for that. Just because, again, he was a little late. Not even that late. Just a little late. And this thing almost got intercepted. Would have been a huge play for Denver. Fortunately, he's out of bounds. But, again, man, Odell's wide open. That should be a touchdown. If this were Baker Mayfield, I would be just as critical, right? You know, because if this were Baker, I'd be even more critical, honestly, because it would seem like Baker just tried to go back shoulder here for no reason. With Case Keenum, I'm a little bit less critical and more forgiving because I don't think he was trying to go back shoulder. I just think he can't get the ball out there with the zip that he wanted to, so it just came out weird, right? And it almost got picked off. So, again, no disrespect to Case Keenum, but, you know, you have limitations with him in there. And this is a key example of one of those limitations. Now, this is a play here that I enjoyed very much. Now, let's just start with the alignment. If you've watched any of these film breakdown videos, you have known that one of the things that have driven me crazy was Ronnie Harrison playing strong safety or, or deep safety, wherever he is on the quarters or whatever, and just crunching down on the short part of the field when he ain't supposed to. Um, this is a play where the Denver Broncos are going to test that, right? They got Ronnie Harrison here. They got John Johnson here. So you notice a change, right? Ronnie's in the box. And then John, he's playing more of a strong safety role with Grant there playing free. Now look at what happens here as I let the play go on, and then we'll discuss. Hmm. See, they tried to do the same exact thing. That the Chargers did, right? Where the Chargers were running a guy underneath the, the Cardinals, too. We're running this dude underneath. Knowing that the strong safety, who's normally Ronnie Harrison, is going to crash down on it, which is going to free up this route up here to be one-on-one -on -one with inside leverage, and that's going to be a touchdown. This is something the Browns have been scored on for the last three weeks. But you put John Johnson there, and instead of crashing down, he baits it. And then slides back up, gets the interception here. So that is a nice adjustment that I like to see his defense make. That is something that they have not done 
all year. It is a personnel change um, in this package that has made it, but it's something I think is worthwhile because, look, you're not getting burnt that time. Now, part of that is because Teddy Bridgewater ain't got no arm, um, and he underthrew it. Maybe a better throw gets that touch now. But still, personnel change made a little bit of a difference because we know what would have happened two weeks ago in that same scenario. And again, look, arm strength might have had something to do with this too. Because Teddy, Teddy drastically underthrows this one. And it's behind him. It's just a terrible throw. Um, but way to be in position there if you're John Johnson. Now, these are the type of plays where I felt like Dearness really earned his money, where he gets like a slip screen like this. And look, look, Pecco just comes off the line. There's nothing the Browns did wrong here. But if you watch Pecco, the guy with the big hair, he gets double teamed, and then he realizes the pressure gets off the double team, and he's pretty smart, so he just runs straight towards the running back and blows his play up. And look, if Pecco does what a defensive tackle is normally supposed to do, which is be clueless or too slow, this is a big play for the Browns because look at all that space. But unfortunately, he blows his play up. This should probably be a loss of five, but Dearness, crafty. Look at that body control. Look at the balance, the cut. Gets inside, stays up, and it slithers for some extra yards. Finds a way to get four when he should have lost five. That's where Nearness earned his money on Thursday. He had the big runs, of course, but that's the type of stuff that made you get really excited about Dearness Johnson. Again, look how Petco just sniffs this out. He's like, man, that was too easy. <laughs> Runs straight there. That's dead to rights. But he just shakes it off, does a huge cut there. And then just slithers forward. Dearness Johnson, man. I don't know if he's a starter for a bunch of other teams, but he can play. He can play in this league. This is another one, man, where people tell me Odell does not get open. Odell gets open plenty. The ball just doesn't come his way for whatever reason, right? This is one where he is egregiously open. Now, I'm going to even be generous here and just say, hey, look, I'm a, before Case Keenum even launches this ball. Now, he ends up, Case Keenum, launching this ball. To Anthony Schwartz, who his man's here, his man's here. That that's not going to be completed. Um, I understand in this situation why you don't want to go to the flats. It would have drove me crazy too if he went went to the flats. But this is Odell Beckham. This is a dude with his back turned. This is a dude about to go upfield. Um, this is a dude worried about the flat too. So if you could have just peeked at the flat, threw it to Odell, you would have got him there. And this is what I call a giant open window. Ball should have went there. Ball should have definitely went to Odell here. He's wide open. He gets open plenty. The ball doesn't get there. It's not really anybody's fault. Well, it might be a little bit Case Keenum's fault, but I'm not going to put the whole blame on him. Um, it's just bad luck. Just didn't see him. You know, this just kind of happens. Right? Like, it just is what it is with him. He's wide open. Like, the the once the ball gets thrown, obviously it's gonna look more open because some guys just stop playing. But you know, so this isn't really a fair frame. But if we just go back to when Kanum had the ball still, look at that. That's still open. You see 21, you should be able to look at that right there at the top of your drop. See 21 open wide to get to that flat, and you should be able to identify this coverage. Uh and then Odell just he's wide open right there. And He's a good enough athlete to where he could score on that play. So, again, man, I, I don't know how many times I pointed this out on film breakdowns, but I feel like I pointed it out every game this year where it's like, hey, man, you could have hit him here. You could have hit him here. And they're just not seeing him for whatever reason. But he's open. He's open plenty. You know, if he goes to a different team, a team that's better able to see him, he's going to make a ton of plays. He's still very good. It's just they're not getting the ball to him um, for whatever reason or they don't see him whenever he's open. And they only throw it to him when he's, like, covered. It's weird. How it goes now with him. Sometimes I just think it's bad luck. All right, this is Dearness Johnson just being slippery as hell. Look at this. Slip, slip, slippery. The man is just slippery. That's body control right there. All right, so this is something where, like, look, I know I've been critical of Case Keenum throughout the course of this video, but I'm going to give Case a little bit of credit here. He does something here that I would love to see Baker do on a more consistent basis. Now, maybe with uh, Jarvis in there, he's more willing to do this because there's more chemistry and trust between the two there. But 
this is something I want to see out of Baker more often because a lot of the times when you're playing the Browns or when the Browns play, they get these looks, right, where they get a tight corner on top or sometimes it's on bottom, sometimes the guy's on Odell. In these situations, I really don't mind if you just throw a 50-50 ball up and give your wide receiver a chance to make a play on the ball. I really don't mind it, right? Single high, nobody's really coming to help. It's going to be one-on-one coverage tight. That's why he's that close. You know, I would love to see if you just give him a chance to make a play here, right? Do the same thing for 13, do it for 80, even do it for 11 and uh in uh 82, right? So this is something that Case does. He's not successful in this attempt, but it's something that, you know, I'll live with if it's a missed attempt because I want to see this more often, right? Just to drop back, you see it, you identify it. All right, you see the safety crash up. One on one, let me give him a shot. It's a good shot, just didn't come down with it. But hey, you know, maybe you will on another drive. So that's just something I want to see out of Baker more um, that Case Keenum does do. Case Keenum, to give him credit, he does. He is more willing to put the ball up there than Baker Mayfield has been at the beginning of this season. Not more than Baker has been throughout his career, but, you know, throughout the beginning of this season, he took shots that Baker wasn't taking earlier in the season. I would love to see Baker take. But Dearness just doing what Dearness does, which is being about slippery as hell. Look at this, man. Contortion. This is what I mean by the contortion. Right? The body, the body control, the contortion to be able to get this first down. Let's watch this in slow motion, right? Because his cuts, they're pretty nice. They look great because of the body control. They're not the quickest in the world, but look, he gets from here, jump, out, body control. Now he's still in control. He has all of his speed on him, stays on his feet, cuts again, stays on his feet. A lot of guys in the NFL, man, they make two cuts like that. They fall in afterwards. Kareem Hunt. Doesn't really make like more than two cuts in a run play because then he, he he'll fall because he don't got great balance. Dearness stays on his feet, and then look, this is what I really like about Dearness. Even when he's contacted, he's contacted here. This is where the tackle starts. Five yards away from that first down, but he just has such great body control that he just pushes this thing all the way to the first down marker. Dearness Johnson. He's great. He's great. I like Dearness a lot. Again, check it out from here. Just just slippery. Just absolutely slippery. Kind of reminds you of a young Le'Veon Bell. And then this is the one to ice the game. Again, man, just being slippery. He gets contacted, still moves forward. Dearness Johnson, give him love. You deserve to lay on the field. Do the Cinderella thing. Yeah, man, Dearness Johnson. This is his appreciation video. I'm so happy that he had this game. Um, but also some things you can learn about this team that they can get better at. And, and hopefully they do improve in when they play Pittsburgh. But that's it for this week's film breakdown. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. But again, guys, have a great day. Have a good night.